Today I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. It's called Blend If, and it allows you to blend two images seamlessly together for some amazing effects. We're going to show you multiple examples. We had a great tutorial. Let's jump in. So we're getting started in Photoshop. We got two images. We got this bokeh image, and then we have this image of our subject. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our move tool right over here. Let's click and drag from one image into another and hit F for full screen. Now, right now this bokeh is just right over top of the subject. What we're gonna do is hit Control or Command T for transform, and then right up here where you see width and then height, I'm just gonna click here on the H and drag that down to the left. That's just gonna resize my image for me and I can put it right about there. Alrighty, now don't forget you guys can download and follow along with all of these examples. It's totally free on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. Okay, now we're gonna basically take this bokeh here and we're gonna apply it right over top of our subject and we're gonna be using blend if to do that. So to get to blend if, all you have to do is double click right here in the layer, just in this gray part, boop, boop, double click, and then you're gonna see your layer style dialog, okay? So anytime you've been here, you might've come here for like, you know, bevel emboss or a drop shadow or something like that. But right here in layer style, you're also gonna see blend if, and this is where the magic happens, everything in the layer style dialog, okay? Now check this out, let's go ahead and move our image over to that side and blend if over on this side or the layer style and blend if is here. So we're gonna kinda explain how blend if works because you have two sliders, one that says the current layer and then one that says the underlying layer. And then we have a little icon on the left hand side for our slider and then an icon on the right hand side for the slider. Now if I take this on the left hand side for the current layer, let's go ahead and click and drag that and see what happens. You can see it's starting to make the dark areas. Look at this dark area here on our slider. Okay, and here in our image, it's making those dark areas invisible. Okay, for the current layer. It's doing that literally on this bokeh layer. Okay, so current layer, where it's dark, it's becoming invisible. And if I take this and I drag it over and over and over and over, okay, the darks become more and more invisible for the current layer. Pretty cool. Now over here on the right hand side, you might have guessed, it just does the opposite. It makes the light areas invisible on my current layer. So I'm starting to be able to see through those light areas and if I keep going, it's gonna show more and more and more. Okay, now this bottom layer, the underlying layer, this is gonna look at the layer underlying. <laughs> it's gonna be looking at this layer. So check this out. If I take right over here and I go from left to the right, it's going to make the current layer, okay, this layer that I'm on, this layer, invisible where the underlying layer is dark, okay? So check this out. It's like making this bokeh layer invisible except for the lightest areas. Like here was a highlight on her face. So that's where this layer is visible now. So literally it's becoming invisible in the dark areas of the underlying layer. Now let's do it on the right hand side. We're gonna go from right to the left and it's gonna become invisible in the light areas of the underlying layer, okay? So now you can start to see the highlights of our subject through the bokeh. So that's kind of how this works. Now there's one more super, super, super important key that we need to know. Okay, right now, check this out. These, uh, this looks like one slider here. All of these look like one slider, but it's actually two different sliders. Now you gotta have to hold Alt or option to activate the two different sliders. And that's so important. So hold Alt or Option and click and drag, and then you're gonna see it breaks up into two sliders, okay? Because one slider, as you can see, if I bring this over here, we can see the edges just look like really rough, right? But we want some feathering. So if I hold Alt or Option and click and drag, I can separate that into two sliders, and then that gives me the option for feathering. See how nice and smooth the edges are there? So we can take these and feather this effect to make it a lot more, just like it'll blend in a lot better, right? And don't forget, you can move either one of these sliders. So this is basically, I'm just taking this, you know, dark areas on my current layer, and I'm making them invisible. And I can say like how much or how little I would like them to be visible, okay? We're gonna maybe take that over there and then bring this over here as well. And look at this beautiful feather effect that I'm able to create. Okay, all within Blend If. Now, 
This is a bokeh effect that we're doing right now, and I want it to generally lighten my image because it's supposed to be adding light. So here where it says blend mode, we're going to change this from normal. I'm going to go down to where it says screen, okay? Screen blend mode. Now, don't forget, you can use these blend modes here in combination. I can still, look at this, I can still decide how this is going to show up with my underlying layer, okay? So I can even bring it over there. I can say, you know, more or less visible there, okay? Now, don't forget, I can go on the right-hand side and do this too. If I hold Alt or Option, I can click and drag and separate those out. This isn't exactly what we want for this effect, but you can see I can start to make it invisible in the light areas as well. So you can do shadows and highlights at the same time. Now let's check our underlying layer. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and separate those two out. And then this way, if I wanted to make this effect invisible on the underlying layer where the darks are, I could do that. Okay, it's not really useful in this exact image, but I can do it. And then on the right-hand side, I can do the same thing with the highlights. I can drag that and make this less visible in the highlights. Okay, there we go. Now, again, this isn't the exact effect that I want. I'm okay with just the shadows being invisible on my current layer, and that, and that gives me this really nice bokeh effect. Let's hit okay. We're gonna hit Control or Command T for transform, and then I can just kind of scale this. I'm gonna go right up here where it says width and a height. I can just kind of scale this and move it around so maybe it's not covering exactly my subject's face. Hit enter and look at that, we are good to go. So we got this really beautiful bokeh effect over top of my subject. I can turn this off and on at any time using blend if. All right, now our next example for blend if, we're actually gonna be adding stars to a sky and show you how to blend perfectly with the background image. So we're starting off much in the same way. I've got my star image. I'm gonna use my move tool and just click and drag from one image to another and hit F for full screen. Okay, we've got our star photo. We're gonna start in the exact same way we did last time with blend if. So again, you can just double click right here in this gray area, which is gonna bring up your layer style. You can also go to where it says FX, okay? FX and then go to blending options. There we go, that's gonna to get to your layer style as well. And you can also go up here to layer, and then you're gonna go down to layer style, and then you can just go to blending options. A few ways to get here, okay? But if you see your layer style dialog, you're perfect and you're ready for blend if. Okay, now here where the current layer is, I wanna make this dark area invisible, right? We wanna make the black sky less visible. So we're gonna hold Alt or Option, there we go, and then click and drag these out to make the black sky a little bit less visible. There we go, that's looking really good. Let's go ahead and change our blend mode from normal to screen. Again, we want those, uh, boom, we want those highlights to show up, right? So screen is gonna remove those back, like the dark areas even more. Then we can kind of fine tune this to decide exactly how much we wanna show up. Okay, now check this out. It's already looking really good in the sky. Like this area looks great, but here, I've got a sky showing up over top of the ground. We don't want that, right? So what I'm gonna do is use the underlying layer now, okay? I wanna make this layer, the stars, invisible where the underlying layer is dark, okay? So I can do that right over here. The underlying layer is dark. Let's hold Alt or Option and separate those two out and then check this out. Boom, I can make the stars invisible where the underlying layer is dark. Okay, and this is gonna allow me full control to basically not have it show up in the dark areas, which is basically just the ground, okay? Now, if I don't want it to show up over the moon, the moon is actually really light in the underlying layer. So I can hold Alt or Option and bring that over to just remove it from the lightest of the light areas in the underlying layer as well. All right, and as you can see, this is looking really good. Let's hit okay there, and I can still move these stars around. Control or Command T, and I can, you know, kind of scale this up if I want to. I can kind of put it wherever I want. And that's looking really, really good. So that did the majority of the work for me. But don't forget, you can still use a layer mask if you need to, right? So let's go to the stars layer here, okay? We're going to create a layer mask. So what we're gonna do first is click on the background, okay? I'm gonna go to select, and we're just gonna go down to subject. So we're gonna select the subject, there we go, subject is now selected, fantastic. And then on the stars layer, we're gonna hold Alt or Option and click here on the layer mask icon. Alt or Option, boom, on the layer mask icon, that's gonna load our subject as a black layer mask, okay? Basically, it's just gonna make the star layer invisible where our subject is, okay? Because we selected the subject and then hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask. Okay, and then if I need to, 
Maybe I'll just use my brush tool. I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool and just paint right down here. I'm just gonna paint black. You can see black's my foreground color, making this effect invisible over top of the water. Okay, so that's what our layer mask looks like. But here, check this out. What an amazing effect we can do with Blend If. Alrighty, the last example we're gonna do is a color using gradient maps. So we're gonna show you one of my favorite techniques using gradient maps. We're gonna apply a gradient map right over top of an image and then use Blend If to decide how it actually blends in. So jumping back in, let's click F for full screen on our last image. Don't forget, you guys can download all these on flurn.com totally free. Just follow the link right down below. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, let's add our gradient map. So we're gonna go to layer up here. We're gonna go to new adjustment layer, okay? And down here where it says gradient map. New adjustment layer, gradient map, and let's hit okay. All right, now with your gradient map, it's gonna pop up in the properties. So let's go ahead and click here on the gradient and we can take a look at a few different gradient maps. So we can just click here through these different gradient maps and try to find that one that we actually like that we think is gonna look cool. Uh, you know, you might see something like this where it inverts. Uh, that's totally okay. I'm gonna show you how to take care of that in just one second. But let's start with this one, okay? <laughs> so we're going in our purples. We're gonna go with this one to purple 21. This is a preset in Photoshop. All right, we're gonna hit okay. Now, if you use a gradient map and it's inverted like this, no big deal. Just go to your properties window here and then click on reverse, boom. Okay, it's gonna look way, way better. All right, now with your gradient map, it's just on a new layer right above your layer. So you can turn this off and on at any time, but you can also use Blend If. So we've been using Blend If on regular layers like stars and bokeh. This is an adjustment layer, but you can still use Blend If here. Again, get to it by double clicking right here in the gray area. Let's hit okay. Go to FX and then to blending options. Okay, there we go. Or to layer and then down to boo, boo, boo. It's right in here, layer style, blending options. Okay, all of those will get you to the same result. Fantastic. So now that we have our gradient map kind of defining our image, I can decide, hey, let's decide where this is gonna blend in with my current layer and my underlying layer. So let's hold Alt or Option and I'm gonna just blend this in. There we go. The current layer is gonna disappear where it's darker, okay? Or the current layer over here is going to disappear where it's lighter. So you can kind of like get a little bit more of a subtle look there, okay? Now you can also do it based on the underlying layer. I can tell this to disappear where the underlying layer is lighter and it's literally just going to color the shadows, okay? Or I can do this to where the underlying layer is darker and it's only going to color the highlights. Okay, so I have a lot of options. I think I like this the best, making it less visible where the highlights are, mostly just coloring the shadows, but still a little bit of color in the highlights. All right, now this is cool. Keep in mind, of course, right up here, you can adjust your opacity of this layer, but the next thing I wanna show you, without adjusting opacity really, the next thing I wanna show you is literally with this gradient map, just double click right here on the gradient map itself. And then you're gonna see the gradient map in your properties, click right there. And then I can go back into any of these gradient maps and see that effect that I just did is applied now. Any of these that I click, they're going to have that same type of effect where they're gonna be less visible in the highlights and more visible in the shadows. So no matter what I choose here, it's gonna still give me that effect that I used on Blend If, because I did Blend If on the whole layer. There we go, that looks really cool. I did Blend If on the entire layer, and it's basically gonna just apply that no matter where, no matter which gradient map that I choose, okay? So I'm kinda going through these, and I can decide, you know, which one, a lot of these look really good. It's a really fun way to kinda color tone your image. I like that one a lot. Let's hit okay. Don't forget, just turn this off and on, and you can still go over your opacity and kind of like lower your opacity if you want. I think these effects are generally a little bit better when they're subtle. This looks really good, like a cool, like faded out kind of vintage type photo. Still coloring the highlights, midtones, and shadows, but more heavily weighted on the shadows. All right, that is so cool. So here you can see we have three different effects we are using with Blend If. So anytime you wanna blend a layer, based on the light or dark information of that layer or the layer underneath it, Blend If is the way to go. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did give us a big thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you wanna get more free tutorials, click on that subscribe button. Thanks again, and I will flarn you later. Bye everyone.